there, Emily Miller. Hey, Kate Richburg. How the heck are you? I'm good. Happy free tip Friday for mm -hmm. Friday. Uh, Friday, December 2nd. We are in December. Fully into it now. Fully. 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 Have you started your decorating yet? Uh, we start this weekend. Got it. Me too. Yeah. We yeah. do not we do not decorate pre Thanksgiving. No, 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 no. I, I am not that kind of person either. No, but and if I, you are yeah. more power, more power to you, but yeah, yeah. I, mm -mm. I like to save it for its own self. Yeah. Yeah. Because Thanksgiving really is my favorite. Um, it's my favorite. So, um, so it looks like we've got, uh, Janice over on YouTube doing her thing and Gita over uh, on Facebook doing her thing. Gita has her brother visiting, which is great. So happy holiday times to you, Gita. And sorry about that Denmark World Cup team. We've been avidly watching. So sorry about that. Tomorrow is USA and Netherlands. So we're going to be on Tinder hooks here in the uh, Richburg Dosher house. So we'll see how that goes. Sorry about the dog barking. Apparently the Amazon guy is coming. Oh, perfect. For gifts. <laughs> for you. I need that dopamine hit is what I need for sure. Um, let's see. Before we get started with your fantastic project today, oh, let me do. So cute. Right. I, lo I love these. Um, <laughs> let me go ahead and do my due diligence here and tell everyone to join us on our many social outlets at beadshop.com on Instagram at uh, the bead table on Facebook, which is our fantastic group of beadshop.com friends uh, who share tips and uh, projects and stuff over there on Facebook. And of course, on our YouTube channel, you can like and subscribe and notify yourself so that you will know when we go live and when we upload new content. We've got a lot of great plans for YouTube coming in 2023, everybody. So make sure it would really be fantastic if you could go over there and give us a follow. We want to reach that 100,000 uh, subscriber mark and we're so so close so with your help uh, we'll be able to get there also you can follow Emily on her Instagram at Emily B Miller Jewelry Emily is that right that's correct I did it um tomorrow's, and you can tomorrow's a rain out day at the farmer's market in midtown Sacramento so there's gonna be an Instagram sale that's right. So you might want to jump on over to that Emily's Instagram because she has some amazing uh, finished jewelry pieces over there. And we promise, I know that some of you have been asking uh, for us to do kind of a live about selling your jewelry and about stuff like that. So we have that also on tap for 2023. So you're going to miss any of that. So you can find all of the information on the project and the products from today's broadcast right on our website. You can sign up for our newsletter for the latest discount giveaways and new products and of course for um, notifications on our live broadcasts all that kind of stuff so I did also want to mention today um, and we'll we'll show them we'll talk about it and we're going to talk about the different colorways that you have Emily you made some specific kits uh, for um, this yeah um, you know, JP and for I this project quite a mm -hmm. bit about colors and stuff, uh, bead, seed bead colors, especially. And right. <clears throat> um, so I really wanted to pick out some things that were kind of fun and festive, but that weren't necessarily, you know, red and green for the holidays, no, you know, right. Something right. More and some right. people love seeing people's trees where they do it all pink and silver, or, you know, they only do red and gold, or they have a really specific color theme. So, um, right. this does offer you, there's three colors in each set. So I don't know how many permutations that makes. A, a lot, a, a, something beyond my um, right. beyond my grasp here. Really but hard. but then you can also just do a solid one. So. Yes, exactly. So um, we have three different, and I'm going to put up. Bear with me here just a second while I do this. Uh, we have three, as you saw here in the 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 little. Um, 
slide we had earlier, we've got the three different colorways here. You can see them here. And there are three different beads that Emily made up with those colorways. So this one is... Um, the one in the very front is called Pignon. Pignon, right. And then Grinchy, because it's kind of Grinch colors, you know, from... Right. And the final one is winter, no, midwinter, midwinter, no, I think. No. Uh, no, hang on, hang on, I should have checked it. Gosh, how could I forget What that? a surprise, I, I don't know, I don't even know what day it is. Hang on one <laughs> second, it is, uh, no, midwinter, you're right, mid you're right, sorry, yeah. yes, yeah. yes, yes. So those are the three, and in your kit, you get everything, you get three tubes of seed beads, you get a spool of KO to stitch them with. You get six of the 25 millimeter wood beads and you get the size 12 beading needles. And that's really all you need. And in this photo, and I'm gonna switch over to um, Emily's um, design board here in just a second. Emily put these on a variety, you can see here on the screen, a variety of leather cord, which looks cool. This- um, The pinion kind of, is, on, is on the- um, The compassion, compassion suede, yeah. Right. And then you have, the, it looks like maybe the one millimeter and then the 1.5 millimeter. Exactly. I really, I, like that. I, have a, I have a box. I don't call it lots of leather, but I should. Um, right. It's just all the scraps from leather projects. And right. I had um, about, I don't know, two or three feet of the compassion suede left. I think I've got enough for one more um, in my stash here. And I just literally folded it in half, stuck the ends through and made a knot. Yeah. Um, I did do that surgeon style knot to make it a little bit bulkier. So right. when you make your knot, you make the loop and you bring the ends through, bring the ends through again. And that gives right. you a little bit bulkier knot. Um, I, I have one here in the from the midwinter collection. <clears throat> this piece I didn't have a long enough, but I had two short ones. So I tied knots oh. at both ends. And right it, at the top and at the bottom. Great. You know, you could tie a knot at the top again too if you wanted. Mm -hmm. to kind of keep it in place. I don't know. I thought that it was sort of nice looking without that extra little bit of stuff there. It just looks Yeah, so but good. they they look great. And yeah. um Karen is mentioning she says she loves the beaded beads. They would be cool to incorporate into a pur into a purse charm and that is definitely oh, true. Yeah. Um yeah, it, they look too. nice on on a handbag. Yeah. So Emily, you also have uh you've got some things to show us and I you do. also have I want you if you can uh also to show us your necklace. Um oh, sure. let me slip it off. Hold on one yeah. second. And I have my, and I'll show you folks this a little bit later when I put myself back on the screen, I'll show you my earrings. But take a look at how cool those beads um, look. And we're gonna talk about coloring the wood. And if you turn, you can see at the top of the bead hole, how the bead, the wood bead underneath is colored. And I think it's kind of a, a magenta-y color, M. It's kind of a orange, a pumpkin. Orange, color. okay, pumpkiny color, um, and you can see just hints of that show through. And I love the pop of color around the edges. And you do that with these beads as well. You're going to talk about the design yeah. and stuff. Yeah, but gosh, a, it's a, really a, a nice color. piece. Yeah, it's fun. And these you can play with that um, mm. pico at the top of the netting. Um, will end up forming around the top of the bead, north south of the bead. And you can change how that pico looks by deciding what colors you want to be there. And mm -hmm. sometimes I'm one color and sometimes I'm a different color. Yeah, so. those look great. And these they are just great. wooden beads that, you know, we carry. They're pretty available. Pretty much any symmetrical, smooth sided one would work for this. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and so take us back a little bit down memory lane. Sure. Um, you have some pieces that you want to share uh, with us. Yeah. And then we're going to, then we're going to go into dyeing the beads. We're going to talk about that. And then uh, we'll talk about the stitching. One quick question, Emily, on the cord that you have those beads on. We don't carry that at bead shop. The um, black one? 
No, no. The one that your necklace is on. No, it was somebody brought that to me from a fancy cord store. Mm. Long like ago, in the, I, in I the upholstery. The and yeah, it's so beautiful. I just kind of held on to it and it finally found a uh, project. <laughs> a, a good home. Yeah. yeah. Great. So talk to us about the samples that you have there. So I've got a couple of pieces. This is a, um, a netted piece that I made way, way, way back in time, my time. But it was a project that came out of Beaten Button Magazine, which, you know, was kind of the, the place to get info before the Yeah, may, may be and be rest. Yes. Right. And um, this was a, a, a reproduction piece for me from a flapper style, flapper era style necklace. So I made it with red and crystal silver lined beads. And it's very long. It actually loops around my head three times. Wow. Endless. So it doesn't have a, um, it has no clasp. I'll put it on here in a minute and then sure. it make you. I can. Yeah. yeah. So it was a really fun project and it was really my first introduction to netting. Um, it did <clears throat> take me a minute to grasp the <laughs> process, but it, and it, strangely enough, it really didn't teach me that much about netting. It taught me how to do this one thing. Right. Um, which was okay. It got me in the in the rhythm of this netting, and then um, that was kind of fun. I really like doing um, using silver line beads for netting because it really does give a kind of a nice pop. These are sort of a different, a little bit of an unusual moment in beads, and I'm going to try and zoom in here, bring this up to top to see. Um, this actually is a silver line bead that has a square hole. So the hole gives it a little bit more reflective. Oh yeah, old old school. Around. Yeah. yeah. And I made this one with tassels at the end. Right. So this has a, uh, like a Venetian glass bead with tassels and bead caps at the end. Mm -hmm. So this is a lariat. It's real pipe, pretty. Right. And then with my fun, my love of going to antiques and flea markets, I did find this actual vintage one. Um, oh, wow. Wow. Really old one. Um, the beads are extremely rustic. Are um, those cuts, Emily? Yeah, those are. I, well, they're hexes, so they're hexes. Actually, hexes they're hexes is what I meant. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then um, and so they're kind of a midnight, a very very dark midnight blue, and then they made a very kind of built-in tassel, which is sort of a mm -hmm. interesting process here. Um, wouldn't have been the way I would have done a tassel, but it worked for them. And I'll show you what's happening at the other end of the tassel. This is what often happens oh. with old beadwork, and especially old thread in beadwork. Right. Right. Um, this well, is it shows common. it's it shows its age. It's been loved a little bit, you know, uh, and then this is kind of an interesting piece. It's also netting. This is not one that I made. This is a, a purchase piece from Florida. From the Seminole Indians in Florida <laughs> have their own beadwork style. Um, and this is a necklace uh, that I've had for a long time. I think I was in high school when I got this in Florida. Oh, that's a, that's a cool piece. Isn't that fun? Yeah, um, this would be kind of a fun one to to recreate. Uh, wait till you see the clasp. You guys are gonna think that's hilarious. So it's oh, a hook and eye. Hook and yeah, eye, right. I it like a that. A lot of options maybe in those days, and it was yeah cheap and available. Right? Yeah, using what you have at hand. Right. So I like netting. It's really got um, as beadwork bead weaving goes. We're making fabric out of beads. And thread so it's got a lot of drape and a lot of flexibility and netting kind of works two directions it can either be vertical or horizontal um we're going to do today we're going to do vertical netting um mm -hmm. or horizontal netting i beg your pardon vertical netting would work up and down would hang up and down vertical netting is going to go the other way so so that's a little bit of history and those are all those are all cool i really that necklace is it's fun huh Oh, yeah, put, it's good. Put, oh, tell me later and remind me and I'll put that long one on. I'm okay. going to bring in my um, my dyeing setup here real quick. Okay. I'm going to try and do it without bumping things too much. This is also a very high-tech way of coloring your beads. Super high-tech. Very high-tech. Very, very high-tech. High -tech. I know. It's, it's very, very high-tech. Um, and I Emily, there's a couple of things before we get into that. Sorry. I... <laughs> don't want to forget these questions here real quick. Um, do you uh, ever repair your vintage pieces? Michelle has a question mm -hmm. like your blue one, or will you just kind of let it be a testament to 
you know what I came before i think that's an interesting question if i was planning to use it wear it use mm -hmm. it slash wear it i probably i would definitely repair it uh-huh um if i'm not planning on wearing it and it's just going to be kind of a collectible for me mm -hmm. which is what most of them are let's face facts um right i will agree <laughs> to repair yeah. it. if beads are actively falling off um, I probably will put some tape on the on the spot where that. I mean, this one was right. just on my bulletin board and pulled it down for today. So, right, it really, it was holding its own just fine, you know, and not not really going anywhere. So, and then one more question before we go on to the dying: Does do you know if the white piece that you had, the seminal piece, mm -hmm. does it have a specific native name that you that you know of? I don't. I don't know. Yeah, it mm -hmm. might. Um, I, know, I'm sure it. Yeah, I'm sure it does. But if you're also in, in in other cultures, Icelandic women make a cape of netting, and mm. when I say cape, I mean something that starts about middle of their neck, so like a funnel neck, and that fits uh -huh. down over their shoulders, past their elbows. That's oh, cool! So it's fun to look. If you Google that Icelandic beading, I'm sure it would pop up. Right. Um, and it's really lovely. Um, right. Netting is, netting is super interesting. You know, it, it does make a really, really flexible fabric um, that could sculpt over a form underneath, which is what we're doing with it today. And so, we also um, have a couple. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I, sir. no go ahead and finish that thought. That's all. That that thought was done. Um, the. Um, the there's someone in our group who's been posting some of her native uh designs that she's been doing on the loom so make sure and kind of take a look through the the bead table group um there are some really cool pieces there um during the peak pandemic i there was a couple of kind of interesting talks and classes that i took on zoom classes um, and a couple were from um, Lakota uh, beadwork, um, women on the reservation who were kind of sharing some crafts and some interesting things. So it was really cool to kind of be, um, you know, get some education behind that because the um, Native American beading tradition is so beautiful and so influential, I think, to all of us still doing beadwork today like that. It's gorgeous. No, absolutely. I, I... I think it's kind of fascinating how, when you think back, how fast this has kind of developed. I mean, before Europeans came to North America, there weren't glass beads. They were using quills right. and feathers and all kinds of other things. And the, if you look at that translation over into beadwork and into leather work and embroidery, and there's a bunch of other kind of places where it kind of intersects. Right. The, the aesthetic and the carry through of design and patterning is so strong. No it's so strong. Material, yeah. That yeah. It's kind of fascinating. Um, yeah. And we're super fortunate to have all of these really amazing influences from across so many cultures that we can bring together um, in our work. So I'm, um, I just, I like to, I just love to see all of that come together and kind of move forward in new directions and seeing some of the young um, Native American beaters. You can find a ton of them over on Instagram. They're so um, beautiful to and great to support because the jewelry is just gorgeous. Yeah, um, and definitely they 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 show you techniques. They show you all kinds of stuff online, and they're working with all kinds of materials. I mean, natural materials like elk teeth and feathers and leather and and suede and it's just it's really cool and and incorporating it back into their in incorporating it into their native traditions and into the modern colors and modern looks too it's it's really neat yeah it's really super inspiring um one other quick question and then emily will get to write what you're doing here um we will be carrying um we only have the wood beads in these kits they're really you can find them like anywhere really you can go online you can find them we're going to be adding some uh, back into, I think, into our um, product offering. But for now, they're only in the kits. Um, and you get six of these beads. We wanted to see how they were going to, you know, 
honestly how they're going to sell. So if you guys want them, let us know and we'll be glad to add them back onto the website. Okay, so M, you're going to talk about um, coloring these beads. Yeah, I started out doing this little adventure, um, mostly just putting them right over the uncolored wooden bead. And I really felt that you can see so much of the beads through the netting, this Grinchy one from the, the sample that's on the web, you can see that the bead is not colored. And this with a very light colored bead, I think works really well. I wouldn't necessarily color it, but I think when I do a dark colored, a dark colored bead, it looks much nicer to have that background kind of disappear into the background a little bit. And you can actually bring in other colors, more color, by adding, by making the bead, you know, a real definitive color that where that, that color shows through. And I'm going to start pulling some samples, past samples from my bowl of beads over here, Kate. Um, here's one done with uh, kind of bumblebee colors. And there's an orange bead. Underneath. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Here's that same pumpkin colored bead, same bead inside, but done with a light orange bead on the outside. And it's that's cool blue. too. Oh yeah, look at that. Right? Look how dynamic that is. So there's a couple there's, ways. To there are so many um, color ways that you can, I mean, just with oh, yeah. the three colors, you yeah. have a real infinite number of possibilities. Oh, tons and tons of choices. So I found that the easiest thing to color with, the beads with, is alcohol ink. And these mm -hmm. are pretty much available. I'll put this on the screen and hold it here for a moment. It's um, Tim Holtz, who's a, a paper and scrapbook kind of guy, Adirondack. Right. You can find them at your local um, craft store. Yep. And they usually come in sets of three, which is kind of nice because you get a little colorway built in. Um, I, I don't know if I have all of the colors, but I probably have most. Um, and there are plenty in these small bottles. I did look around online a little bit. And um, bottles are bigger online. So these are tiny. How much of this? Point for half an ounce, half a fluid ounce. Yeah. Plenty for yeah. the at home crafter. Um, so I used a couple of different colors, and I think any of these work pretty well under the pinion and under the Grinchy. Um, but I this is how I do it, and this is the way I find it has been the easiest and the least likely to get my fingertips dyed colors. Right. Um, and just real quick, Em, I wanted to also uh, jump in and say you could use what I've used, and I've had a, a few of mine here. I have some of those big like marker pens, like the big alcohol pens sure. that I've, I've, cool. I've drawn sure. or colored them with. And you could also use uh, food coloring, I think, right? Or regular writ dye, I think would also work. You know, um, one of the things that I really like about the alcohol inks is that the alcohol does not raise the grain on the wood bee. Oh, right. So very it's smart. Kind of a, it's a little bit of a technical thing, and it's it's a mm -hmm. very small difference. Let me show sure. you. So sure, sure, sure. How shiny and nice that is. Right. Right, and so that that wood grain doesn't really lift up quite as much. It's right. It's nice to have it be very nice and smooth. I don't know. It's a little detail. Yeah. Um, no, that's a that's a great point. Here's a little color that d doesn't get a lot of love. It's kind of an interesting one. It's called Lake Mist. But I put my beads on a chopstick, and then I just dribble the alcohol ink around on them. And they color up really fast, which is nice. And it takes about, I don't know, maybe five, ten minutes for them to dry. Yeah. Um, I put it on the end of a chopstick, and the chopstick is reusable no matter what color it is. Um, and I have a paper plate with a paper towel in it just to kind of keep them from rolling around too much. But I do kind of jam that bead on the end of the chopstick so that I don't have to worry too much about losing the bead having it come off nothing like having it roll off onto your clean pants right exactly rail of ink uh, and, and then, the alcohol ink is pretty permanent so i don't have to yeah worry. and see how it's really saturating into the bead um that looks great yeah. kim is asking also about the vintage patina paint i think you could certainly use that patina oh, paint yeah. that Mostly is reserved for metal, but I think it would also work on um, wood. There's also a product that I use. Um, I use it a lot on metal called Rub and Buff or Gilder's Paste. You could also use that too. 
um, it's a little messier and you have to rub it in and kind of buff it off. Um, however, you want to add some um, color to this. You know, people are asking about permanent markers. These, yep. um, these wood beads are so inexpensive that the world is re literally really your oyster. So mm -hmm. there's no reason not to try any, uh, you know, painting uh, medium. Yeah. Oh, that These, one's pretty. You know, I like a gray. This is slate. Slate. Yes. So the other things that I kind of like about <clears throat> about the alcohol inks is they're kind of low odor, mm -hmm. um, which some of the metal uh, vintage stuff can be a little, it's a little waxy and a little stinky and right. kind of comes off on your hands. See, I did, that bead's not on there firmly enough, but I'm going to make it so there. Uh, the chopsticks are really great. If you want to um, let these dry vertically, you can, although I just put them on the paper towel and they're fine. Yeah. Um, if you want to let them dry, get a bowl, put some beans in it, and then stab the chopsticks down into the beans, and then they can. Oh, then um, they'll set, stand up. They'll stand up and just dry yeah. right up to it. You know, a, a couple of factoids here that we've got. Um, Julie is saying Vintage also has stains for wood. They're called oh. the ultimate stains, which that must be a fair, you know, uh, my alcohol inks, Emily, are probably as old as your alcohol inks, which are probably pretty old. Uh, so I haven't bought anything new lately. Um, um, I think these are about, I think they're about maybe seven or eight or nine dollars for a set of three. Yeah. Um, which I don't think is too expensive. No, not um, at all. And they last for me, they've lasted for this application. They've lasted a really long time. I've tried a couple other things that I've done. I've been, I have um, indigo dyed bead, wooden beads. Yes. And beautiful. Make them a little bit um, rough. And mm -hmm. again, it affects that finish on the beads. They're not as smooth and even uh, feeling. Um, but the look of them is is fine. I have some behind yeah. me on my wall, I think. Which if you oh, want nice. To them, I Ellen, will. Ellen is also saying Tim Holtz alcohol inks are now sold under his name rather than Enter on Deck. Oh, um, and they're a Ranger Ink product, and you can oh. find those, as I say, at kind of your big box craft stores. They're real easy to find. Yeah, so um, there's three different kind of nice earth tony ones. This one's mushroom. Beautiful slate and lake mist which was this kind of um interesting the so color pretty. that's coming through on the paper towel as this dries yeah. is those are great different. and those are drying already that first one that you did is pretty dry still coming off on my fingers a little bit but almost but dry. they dry yeah, yeah pretty quickly pretty fast. yeah it's a nice inch it's an interesting to see the colors that make up another color you know, um, like right. I would not have necessarily said that the lake mist had a lot of blue or yellow in it. I was just kind of saying it was more of a dirty, mossy green-ish. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting to see this other little color palette kind of happening there. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah, um, really inspirational you know? color palette for sure. Yeah, really fun. Trish, Trish is sharing the tip. You could also use a block of styrofoam or floral foam to stand up sure. the chopsticks with the beads. Yeah. Um, or even an old egg carton. Very good. Oh, tip. yeah. Egg cart. What a smart yeah. idea. Really smart. Yeah. So once you have those colored M, they're you... going to be set aside. Okay. So I don't need those now until my netting is done. So okay. it's kind of makes sense to actually do it. And, and, and you can then swap your beads through that netting a few times if you want. You can pick different colors and say right and see that? what works right you know so there's an undyed bead under the pink let's let's just throw something really wild under there and see what happens i've got a green one here <clears throat> that green does show through the pink it's pretty dark though mm -hmm. it doesn't make as much of a color change as i thought it might how about the red one yeah, something that has a pretty big contrast would probably show up. Well, the red's very pretty. It does warm that pink up considerably. So there's a pink over an undyed mm -hmm. and a pink over a dyed red bead. Nice. Right? So, yeah, okay. really experiment and see what yeah. what works for you, for Play sure. Play around. It's fine. You know, this is a at this stage, which is the almost done stage, 
you can actually try a few things. Nice. And there's the kind of a pumpkin. Oh, that looks pretty. I like that. You yeah. like that? It adds some depth to it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Pink is an interesting color, you know, it can go a bunch of ways. Yeah. That's real pretty. So you have some, uh, we have, uh, on the website, on this project page, the netted beads, Emily has her original handout, which I always consult before I make these because I can't ever hold this technique in my head. That's just how it is. <laughs> <laughs> and you've also, Emily, made an addendum um, that goes with it. I did. I I kind of was playing around with um, kind of oomphing up the, the patterning on this particular project. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's kind of a small, it's a small detail, but I wanted to point it out. One of the things I thought was interesting was to pick a pattern, make a pattern where it allows me to color in the whole Pico. So these two little sort of off vertical angled beads that go into the Pico, feed in and out of the Pico, um, I decided to change their color. So I changed the, the idea of how I put these beads together and started my base row and strung on the beads just a little bit. Um, one of the things that you're going to have to do with this project is you're going to have to do a little bit of trial and error. And let me tell you, let me tell you why the wooden beads that you buy as nice as they are, are not terribly accurate in measurement. The other problem comes in with whatever pattern we pick out. However, we decide to use our colors of beads. If we alternate that pattern, this one is using the dark blue as the main color and the white as the main color on this side. The, the width of measurement that we make, we end up making is different because the beads themselves have little differences in measurement. Mm -hmm. So when we multiply all that difference in measurement, that becomes very apparent. So I did this particular sample using my seed beads in a kit, which is what we started out with seed bead learning for something that you could practice with where the beads themselves were kind of contrasting and it was very visible what you did and didn't do. So I started with the plain blue. I transitioned to having the blue as my main color and the white as my accent. And then I transitioned again to have the white as my main color and the blue as the accent. Um, there's a couple of errors in here. If you guys screenshot this and look at it really carefully, you'll be able to pick my pick up my little errors. But they were so small that eh, I just blew it off. Um, I also can change the length of the Pico. And the length of this Pico that we make here three, four, five, seven beads long, however you want it long, you want to make it. That length is what binds the tops of the beadwork around the hole. So this is a really easy place to make an adjustment for length or width. So let me show you what I do. And um, this is can be the beginning of your uh, seed bead sample jar, if you like. Look what I have right here. All these the samples, the samples. So these were samples that I was playing with to check my measurement. Okay. And colorways that I sort of thought were going to work, but didn't really turn me on after I got a few rows in. So this is my wood bead right here. I'm going to measure it. And what the measurement's going to do is just give me a place to start. And I'm going to use my digital dial caliper. I'm going to put it on millimeters. I'm going to zero, close it all the way, make sure it's closed, zero it out. And I'm going to measure bead hole to hole. This is a what has sold as a 20 millimeter bead. So it's actually 23. This bead right here is sold as a 25 millimeter bead. And it's actually 25.0, and a half, right? So these beads, although they're sold as two different sizes, are actually really close to one another. I could probably grab another bead over here and measure it, and it would be from the same batch, a different measurement too. Well, pretty close, okay? So when you measure the beads, it's gonna give you different sizes, even amongst the same ones. And that measurement, and then the fact that we have another variable, the beads that we're choosing, it's all gonna mean you're gonna to have to do a little bit of testing, okay? So by testing, I mean to make a bit of beadwork, let me pick one. 
here's the Grinchy, right? Green, red, and white. You're going to pick um, a colorway out, decide on what you're making, and then you're going to make a little bit of it. Now, if this happens to work out and you don't have to make any adjustments, you're good to go. But you may have to make an adjustment to actually make this a little bit longer or a little bit smaller. So what I would do is take my bit of beadwork and I'm going to stretch it from hole to hole. And what I would like my beadwork to do is just kind of come into that, that hole of the bead. So it looks like it's doing that on both ends. That way I know that I'm going to be okay. If it's a little too short, let me show you what happens. So this bead is complete except for cinching in the top and bottom. So I can see clearly that the beadwork as it comes in here is not going to fit as tightly as I really would like it to. Right. Too, that's, that's what happens to me. Right. There's a really easy fix for that. <laughs> and you don't have to worry. Phew. Good to know. But had I added a bead in each pico, I would have been golden. Right. Right. And what's super interesting is that I can pick up another bead that's the same colorway. And um, oh, this is actually a little bit bigger. I made this netting a little bit bigger. This one fits perfectly, just the way I would like it to fit. I made this netting, I made the netting itself narrower, and it, now it doesn't fit at all. So had I added an extra bead in each pico, I would have been golden, but I didn't, right? So we have to measure pretty much every time. I'm going to get started, and I'm going to go along and show you how that measurement looks. And then we're going we're gonna to look at this guy. We're going to make this guy into a completed bead. So you can see the join up process and um, the cinching down process because it all, it's all a part of one of another. Great. And right. just real quick, Janice sure. also linked, um, and you can find it if you go right to the homepage for beadshop.com. Um, you can go to projects um, if, or if you just search um, netted, the episode notes under netted beads, and then we've got these holiday netted beads, the supplemental handout. Um, you'll have all of the information that you need to kind of follow along um, when you create your own. So I really urge you to go right over to beadshop.com. Um, I'm and, just um, clearing my, my little work surface up a little bit here, only because I don't want to see anything <laughs> in my thread. If you need sure. me to bring something back into frame, just let me know. Yeah, um, no, I think you're good. And then you're going to show us also, Em, that one that's too small, you're going to show us how to fix that as well. Absolutely. Perfect. Because that makes, makes I, I love that Kate has that problem sometimes. And I have that problem pretty much every time. I can fix this for you, honey. <laughs> every time I make that bead, I run into that issue. So if I'm not a good measurer. Oh, it's not the, it's, you know what? I think part of it is you get that first few rows done and you go, oh God, okay, just keep going. Yeah. And, and that's totally, that's totally understandable. Um, I was going to go ahead and do this little <laughs> sample with um, my seed bead and the kit beads, but maybe I should do it with um, one of the samples. Yeah, have? let's do it with one of the, with one of the kit colors. Okay. I love all those colors so much. I can't decide which one's my favorite, to be honest. Oh, of the kits you mean? Or yeah. Oh. Yeah, of your kits. Yeah. Oh, I think we did. Janice and I, Janice helped me. We did a good job. And uh, yeah, they look it great. Was really, it's really fun to look for colors. And I did a, I did a whole Christmas kind of holiday palette search, and that was really uh, entertaining. So, so I've got. You know, I didn't do a Grinchy with mostly red. I think I did one red and one. Oh well, this one's mostly red. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. So maybe, oh, maybe I'll have to do a green, mostly green one then this time. So I like to put out my beads in little piles. You know, everybody kind of does their own thing, but um, my preference is to kind of do a little pile. And mm -hmm. your tubes of beads that you have in your kit should make at least six beads. If you think that you're going to turn this into your new Christmas craft and be making more, buy a couple kits, you know, they're fun. You can have all the colorways, my goodness. And uh, you don't have to pick out anything. I'm gonna pick, in case, because I'm doing this a, kind of as a sample, I'm actually gonna pick a color that I, a color thread that I would probably say is the wrong color for this. Because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing, 
I'm actually just going to take this dark brown. Okay. Since two of my colors are transparent, this should make it pretty easy to see. I would use a piece of thread about a yard and a half long, which is my, my standard length. Uh, today I'm going to use something about 18 inches long. The, uh, I'm not going to finish this most likely. And, um, it's too long for me to pull and pardon my bandaid on my finger there. It's too long for me to pull in and have as a big mess. So to thread my needle, I pinch the thread between my thumb and forefinger. I press the eye of the needle down onto the thread and it goes right through. Okay. KO thread is a great thread for this. It's very resilient. You don't really need, um, fire, the strength of fire line for these or the stiffness. <clears throat> if fire line's your favorite thread, if nine was your favorite thread, by all means use that. Okay. Now I know I want this to be more green. So I'm actually going to start with, uh, I guess we're going to do green and white and then red around the edges. So let me just, um, pull out my graph paper. Kate, hold on. Bear with me one moment. Just one no moment. worries. No problem. Put this in front of me and I think you can see, I'm going to pull back just a tiny bit. And that's from, that's from your handout. This is from and today. I had, I had myself muted cause I'm rooting around trying to find oh. the right seed bead color here, but, um, <laughs> We're going to do this first one, um, and I'm going to do what I think is correct, um, a 17 bead with a four bead Pico. Actually, I'm going to make it a five bead Pico. I'm going to change this up just a tiny bit. What I discovered as I was working with some of these colors, the green bead in the Grinchy is a smidge, just a smidge smaller than the white and the red. Actually, a smidge smaller than the white. It's closer to the red in size. Um, so I'm anticipating that I'm going to need a little bit more length here at the Pico side. So that means I'm going to do five beads in this Pico instead of just four. Okay. So that four bead Pico is the part that's right at the top and kind of joins the in-between nettings. Okay. So when we start this process, the first couple of beads we put on, the first two, are actually going to be involved in a Pico later. I'm going to color this in in a minute and I'll show you what that would look like. I'm going to do 17 beads and then five more beads for the Pico. The base row of the netting is basically multiples of four plus one bead. So 16, four times four, 16 plus one. I could do 12, three times four for a smaller bead. And I would do that but I would have to make my Pico really long at both ends. There'd be a lot of work there. Or if I'm making a bigger bead with less netting, it's going to be really long. I could do eight, but I'd have to add one. So that would be nine. So that's our, just our base kind of number of beads. We can alternate these if we want light, dark, light, dark to get that main color and alternating color. You're going to want to start with, your main color. So we'll be, we would do white, black, white, black, white, black. That would give us white as our main color. And then on the, on the reverse, if we want black to be the main color, we would do black, white, black, white, black, white. We're going to color it in in a minute and you'll see where it works out. Okay. So I'm going to do, um, red picos. So red picos here and mostly green with a little bit of red in the body and white and red picos at the top. That's at the top. Really, yeah. So that would be and basically three of the variations. Yeah. Just like that. Don't they look that different? That looks so nice. Yeah. They really look different. Yeah. And I, I want to uh, reiterate that I know all of this seems, those of you who haven't made these beads before, it's like, you know, where do you jump in? Seriously, if you download Emily's handout from the website and just don't do any variations other than what she tells you to at the beginning. You're going to be fine. Yeah. Once you have one of these under your belt, all of the lights come on Ser and uh, seriously. So just and hang in there with her. The other thing that's kind of fun mm -hmm. is we're making this strip of fabric, right? Come back over here. you. We're making this strip of fabric. This is the beginning edge, this left-hand edge. If something went wrong, or I changed my mind in the beginning, I could actually take my stopper bead off and just peel off from the beginning. 
and it wouldn't affect all the speed work down here. So then I would just have right, to go right, longer, right, right. So there's you really would just not take a, that out, right? It's so super easy to take it out. And so <laughs> if you make a little mistake and you feel like, oh God, it's not that you have to undo from where you're working. You're going to undo way back here. To right. Take that out. So it makes it a lot easier. It's a lot less risky if you make a mistake. Okay. Especially at the beginning. So netting is a little different. And this netting, we're going to actually make it put a stop bead on, but we're never going to take it off. It's going to become part of the beadwork from here on out. So it's always going to stay in. It's very different than whenever I talk about a stop bead. All the other times, this is the one exception. The stop bead is going to be part of the work. It's going to stay in forevermore. So the stop bead and the first bead that I put on after it is part of the count and it's part of the pico, right? So I know that I want my pico to be red. So I'm going to pick, pick red, two red beads. So that's two beads. And now I need to do my alternating beads for 15 more till I get to 17. <clears throat> I can't emphasize enough how much, just like Wednesday, how much you want to double check your count. And it's important, but it really isn't, there really isn't a fix for it unless we double check our count. Except for starting over. I mean, that's a fix in itself. So, so I just got, grab some on here and I'm going to take a look. And I'm going to count myself, see how many I've got here. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Oh, I was super close. One more. Okay. Now, I said before that I thought my green beads were a little smaller than my white beads. So if we look at these close up, I'm going to just space them out a little bit so that you can have a good look at them. If you look at them close up, you'll see that the white beads are a little bit fatter. So this is a white lined crystal bead. So the bead itself has no color, but there's a lining in the hole. It's painted in the hole. So it gives it a color in the middle. So this bead, the green beads are a little narrower. The white beads are a little fatter. This is what's leading me to think I need a little bit more in my Pico. Okay. So now I'm going to pick up five beads over here for my Pico. So it's, I think, a good idea to kind of look at your beads before you stitch into them. Getting them on the needle and thread is one thing, but once you start stitching, then things get a little bit more committed and it's a little harder, <coughs> excuse me, to undo, okay? So I'm gonna take those five beads, I'm gonna slide them down and I'm gonna hold my thread. So this is a five bead Pico, which means that the end bead, the very last one, is actually the stopper. So I'm not gonna go through it, but I'm gonna go through three here in the middle, okay? Have that pop out. That dark thread does show well against that. Apparently the UPS guy is here now. So the dogs are barking in the background. Sorry about that. <laughs> yes, treats. they're they're excited for your- I know, it's treats or something coming in the mail. That's so the right. next step is to do my first um, net of my netting. And because I popped out of, of bead number four here in this Pico, you know, one, two, three, four, my first bead that's going to sit next to it in my netting is going to be the same color as that Pico. So this is where things got a little bit more complex from last time. I wanted to be able to extend some of the color from that Pico and kind of have it be a little bit more interesting. Let me show you one here where that's real apparent versus one where it's not real apparent. Okay. So here's the red, white, Grinchy one. And hold the thought. Hold that thought. Uh, so the Pico beads, these two ones that are slightly angled, they're actually part of that netting. So I've got that other color, that same color as the blue. And I have to do that to pick, to do that, I have to pick up one of those colors in my first net. So I'm going to grab a red one and I'm going to grab a green one and I'm going to grab a white one 
I'm going to double check that I've got this correct. Nope, I was wrong. Sorry. I'm going to grab a white one and then a green one. So I've got three beads on my needle. And this is just the first stitch of the first knit. I'm going to count with my needle four beads down. So the one that's coming out of the netting, two, one, two, three, four. That's that green one down there. And you know what? Double checking myself, I did it right the first time. Dang. I was going to say, I saw it and I was going to tell you, Emily, that was right. Not enough coffee in the morning, apparently. Because you want the line of color to be the same. Yep. Can you see? Right. Yeah. So you want those. So your red one is first, then your green, then your white. Then you're counting down to four. And that's a green. And you're putting it through that green. Right. So as I pull this tight, remember we can scooch up from the stop bead, which is invaluable. And what I should see, what one should see here, is lines of beads lining up. Red, green, white. Okay. So now I need three more beads. And this is going to establish my pattern from here on out. White, green, white. I'm going to count down four beads. One, two, three, four. It's a green one. So I know from the last time that it was a green one, which means that's not going to be a green one for here on out. Mm -hmm. Because you're not alternating the, the pattern of color. It's right. that you've established it. And then you're going on. And that would from you here. Can do that, but it's going to be very chaotic. Yeah. So you wanna you wanna stick with your pattern. Yeah. Gosh, I think my band-aid is really in the way. So oh I'm that one spot where I kind of hold, feel the thread and I'm not feeling it. How are we doing, Kate? Okay on the visual? Yeah, good, good, real good. Kate and I practiced a little bit this morning with a new Slightly new setup, so if I, end up with working. Crook, if I end up with a crook in my neck from bending off to the side, we'll see. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Three more beads, white, green, white. I'm going to grab that green bead, come through, and there we go, right? So here's my first row of netting, and I have just one pico built. Not, the second one's coming up right now. Five beads all red. I could have done a white one on the end. That would have been kind of festive. Next time. It's interesting. I know that when I'm do stitching these, I often come up with a color pattern and I'm like, oh, oh, and I have to hold on. Yeah, I should have done that. Right? So now notice how Emily is where the Pico is sitting. So you see how you have that one bead at the top, that bead at the bottom, and those three beads in the middle, that's the actual like leg of the Pico. Correct. If that makes sense. So now I want all of you who are watching to think ahead about what the next color bead is that Emily's going to put on. And you can see, you can guess what that's going to be because what's missing right there, it's going to be a red right? That's the first one. And now back to the pattern. I think it was white. Is it white? No, it's green. Is it green? Yeah, sorry, I missed the green. I can't see on the screen. Sorry. So it's the red, the green, the white. She's going to count down four. So here's where it gets a little easier. Mm -hmm. After I've got my first Pico on each end, my nets will start to kind of bulge out to the side. Right. And the one I'm aiming for is the one that's in the middle of that bulge. It's poking out the farthest. So one, two, three, four. And right as you there. do this and pull it nice and firm, scooch everybody together here, you'll see it happening even more. So here's my bead right here in the middle. Go. And there it is. And, so and it's when, 
Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm going to continue this for the till I get to the next Pico, and then I'm going to take a moment to measure against my. Yeah. Pico. Okay. That's a and good you can see as Emily's creating this netting, it's the row that's behind the row she's putting on. That's when you really start to see the netting start to evolve. Yeah. Okay, so there you are. Now you're ready to put on your last pico. So five, skip the end and go back through three. Right. And then Emily, after you check your length, would you mind laying this down next to your chart so we can kind of see where that relates to it as well? Right. So I'm going to put my netting. Oh, I'm way short. Boy, even with the five bead pico, that's way short. So I'm, I'm short. Well, I might not be. I might be real close. Let me just take a moment to talk about this problem, okay? So I would really like my Pico to be inside that hole on both sides. Definitely not if I do this, okay? And I could have added one more set of netting to this. So I was at 16. That would have been 20, adding 4 plus 1. So I would have been at 21 beads long. Um, that's also in your handout. I did both 17 and 20. But you can do any multiple of 4 work for this um down to four i think four would work i'm gonna have to try four any multiple of four will work when we comes time for us to cinch this bead together you can see that where i'm going to be doing the cinching is kind of far away from the north pole or the south pole so the way to fix this um is pretty simple kate hold on So when we get done holding, with, holding, yes, holding. When we get to this stage where we're ready to cinch this together and not have feeling like these picos are kind of far from the north or south pole, right? I would end up with a lot of gaps of thread showing. So all I need to do is put a bead in between each pico as I stitch them close. No one will ever know. <laughs> there won't be any it's not going to be up for discussion that you mismeasured a little bit or that the bead was suddenly the wrong shape or you made one and then you realize you didn't have a bead to go in the middle and you had to go buy some beads and they're the wrong size. So all I would do is I have my thread coming out of a pico. As I stitch the picos together and make them into a circle, I would add a bead in between each one. Now, in this case, I, I probably will need a bead in between about every other pico or every second pico, because I'm pretty far from the hole. And if you end up with one, a bead in between each pico on one end and not on the other end, again, no one will know. And it will be in, it will be pretty much invisible. So that's quite fine. So this is the way I would have told you to fix this. It's really yeah, and easy. It really, it really all blends. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, if you really are going to do one in between, you could pick a different color and make it a design yeah. figure. Right. But, make it a design okay. thing. And that's what I've done. That's what I've done to, yeah. uh, to make it. To Had make I made it work. this one five bead Pico on each end, I probably would be okay. Yeah. Right. So let me do, maybe, let me do maybe two more rows and just checking the time, how we're doing. We're doing okay. Yeah, we're doing all right. Let me do about two more rows of this netting. Keep talking netting. And will you uh, show how that netting then relates to your graph? Yes. Yes. Oh, on... let's do that before we go any farther. That'd be great. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. And I pulled out my handy dandy trusty pens. So we started. And I would print a couple pages of the second and third page that you can use for graphing, okay? Um, and then just use your pens for coloring in as you like. I think it's easier to just lightly color them in. I don't think you need to completely darken them out. Um, 
but I think this is just the, the easiest way to kind of go, right? And let me go up here. And remember on this one, I did add a Pico bead, an extra bead. So instead of a four, it's actually a five beater on this particular one. So we could sneak another bead in there and say, okay, there's actually five in that row. And I'm using green and white. So we did, we'll do green on every other one. If you make a mistake, um, I showed this uh, the last time I had a graph in front of me, and I just used those corrector um, cartridges. I'm really lucky it's sitting right here. Oh, it is. These That's kind of smart. guys come from Office Depot or wherever. And if you if you color something in and you went, oh, shoot, that's the wrong color and it's hard to follow, just white it out and keep going. Right? So that's what it looks so like. At, that was so at this point, out. so at this point, when you just added that extra bead in there as your Pico, and yeah. you could make this Pico, like you could keep the netting the same. Yes. Right? And you could add one, two, six beads. Six beads. three, Absolutely. yeah, however many yes. you need to on that length of the Pico. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right? Basically, you need two beads to make a Pico. Right. But three it looks, three looks a little nicer, right? Um, let me show you here. Hold on. For instance, this vintage piece, right? It's one we looked at earlier. Oh, nuts, I just dropped my pen. So this vintage piece, these are the two Pico beads at the end. Mm -hmm. Right there. They came out, skipped this one, and went back into this one, and then picked up three beads, and then picked up this guy, right? Mm -hmm. Picked up another... another um, uh, three beads. I'm counting. I'm going the wrong way. Uh, and then came down, did another Pico back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And so that Pico that's at the top, uh, when you say it's a two bead Pico, mm -hmm. that bead is really, it's coming up from the bead below it through the bead above it and then back down through the bead below it. So they're kind of stacked. Yes. The bead above the hole is on the horizon and the bead below the hole is on the vertical. Correct. So mm -hmm. picos are like a super short fringe. Right. Right? Same, we we could do a whole show about fringe too. Okay, one of these days, make a note. Yeah, smart. <laughs> picos are very short fringe. They happen to be built in <clears throat> while we're making it, which is what we don't usually do with other designs but they are acting kind of in the same fashion. They, your thread goes through a bunch of beads. It skips the last one and comes back through those same beads. Same way we would build a fringe. So over here, if we were to look at this guy. And pull that up, push that up a little bit, Em. It's oh, a little sorry. out of frame. There we there go. There you go. We have red, we have red. And then we've got green. Get to that right. I think so. Yeah. Right. And we have our picos happening up here. Right. So that's her first, the one that Emily just colored in, that was her first row. So the row right. that's all the way to the left. And the row she just colored in is the same row. Yep. This guy is off a little bit. This is just giving, whenever I do a graph, I tend to explode them out a little bit. So this guy should really be, oh no, there's another bead. We had a five bead. So we should yeah. have, this bead should actually be a little closer over here, but he's going to be right. red. No, sorry. It's, it's going to be here. And then we're going to have a red bead and we're going to have there. white and green. Right. Mm -hmm. You fix that with my white out. I can show you exactly what it looks like. So then I can color over him again. Okay. So then we've been continuing along with white, green, 
white, et cetera, on down, on down, on down. And so we would end up with our pattern extending itself straight through. So Emily, when you're going through your beads on that beadwork, are you going through the green or are you going through the white? I'm going to be going through the white. Okay. And in the actual piece that you're making, oh, I'm are going you going the green? I'm off. You're going through the, the green. Sorry. I thought so. Yeah. That's okay. But you can see, we can see that. Um, so your first bead that you put on was actually. Um, Might have been a white bead. Would have been a white bead. Yeah. Okay. So. Sorry about that. As I, as you were coming well, back down. The thing. I was, I'm often coloring. I'm not going to go through and white those guys all out. That's no, no. Takes too much time. But you time. saw how Emily, I mean, even if you, however you colored them in. Yes. That's how you'd follow them. But you guys get the idea. Yeah. So uh, here I am again at one Pico bead, one green bead, one white bead. Picking that up. Right. Going through. And now it's going to be I'm back to um, white, green, white. And carrying it right along. And going through the green. Yeah, I'm going through the green. And see, folks, how that green bead, how Emily was talking about it earlier, that green bead is popping out. Right? So that's the one that you go through. It starts to really visually become... Um, uh, pretty easy to see. It does. And if you want, you can put your needle in the net a little bit and kind of push it up. And then that green bead will hop out a little bit. Yeah. Common bead. But the netting, as you go along, first few rows, suddenly things will start looking a lot more yeah. cohesive and um, together. Now, let me ask you this, Emily, while you're stitching that. Yep. Um, when we're adding thread into this piece this is um, the piece that i would add thread to okay but we are going to have to end off our threads we shouldn't okay. need to add thread in this piece if you because how long up, you shouldn't need to how long did you cut your thread at the beginning about a yard and a half okay and you could always weave in way in the way back weave in a new thread have it come out of the correct hole and then oh, bring yeah. the other thread back in if you needed. But you're saying if you use about that yard and a half, you should, you shouldn't, for this size bead, you shouldn't have to add any. No, you shouldn't have to add thread. The, yeah. um, when we finish off these threads, we're going to weave in and then tie off our threads uh, one at a time. And we're going to do that, but we're also going to use them for the uh, cinching in the Pico part of this. So. Mm -hmm. so after this row, M, you'll go ahead, we'll do the uh, the closure. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. On that other bead. So um, there was a couple questions as you're finishing this. If you were using a different size bead, let's say going down to a 15 or up to an 8, Sure. Uh, you could probably net this in any size bead. Sixes might be a little big, maybe. Right. Um, but I think you could do the same with an eight. You would just have to experiment with your netting. Obviously, it would be fewer nets. Uh, depending on the bead. Yeah. Right. Depending on the bead. Right. Depending I'm on the size of the bead. Hot. There's one done with 15s. Yeah. Look at that. Not pretty. Very. I think I have another one in here too. I should show you what I'm digging around in. In this bowl full of fun. Ah, oh, yeah, That's there's right. another. Thing. Very this is crazy. why I want to get 15s, JP. Yeah, that's a nice looking bead. Right. And in your the original uh, video that we do this with the mm. um with the netted bead, you talk a lot about thread changing and stuff as well. So people can go back to um, that original. It's the Victorian Christmas um, collection. And it's there on the page uh, if you go to the netted beads. But Janice has that there as well. Yeah. And I, I linked it in the handout. So great. it's in that part of it too. Oh, great. I think. 
as a hyperlink. I think it is. Yeah. I feel like I picked up four beads. No. Nope. So those white beads are deceptively a little bit bigger. It's sort of interesting how these guys work. And I will, um, I will remake this one with not dark thread because I do like the colorway that's coming out. Mm -hmm. Not pretty. Okay. So it would be a pico now and then continuing on. But you can see pretty easily now with a little bit bigger piece of beadwork that um, I'm really not close enough to my holes for my liking. Mm -hmm. I had one more set of nets and a four bead pico or make a six bead pico on each other. Yeah. Much happier. Yeah. Okay. So putting aside that little sample into the sample bowl, it goes. And hello, blue and white. Hello, Roscoe barking. <laughs> yes, barking. We're, you guys, are, you folks will all see the uh, 15s. They're coming along in January. So you'll I cannot, see I simply those cannot wait. Yeah, Roscoe we're going to have to have a big seed bead party. You know, um, um, because they are they are so delicate and so delicious. Um, and you're going to love them for like in between pearls as a knot. You know, um, you're just going to think yeah. they're, they're going to just be the prettiest little bead that you ever met coming down the street. Well, I am looking at my seed bead collection here and I have a few 15s in this collection. So yeah. I'm excited to get some to get some more of those. Well, um, Maybe next year, next Christmas, next holidays, we'll do this again with 15s. 15s and, would be uh, fun. Yeah, I have all the colors of 15s in these same colors to do these guys, to do smaller ones. And um, maybe I'll be finished with it by then. That's one of those long-term projects that I'm not so good. Yes. Put it on Put it on the long-term. Now, with this one, uh, M, in your handout, you have talked about the, the length that you need this netting to be, but how do you check for that? Because you so want this to be snug, but not super snug. It's, it's right? super scientific. I wrap it around <laughs> the bead. Right. <laughs> and see if it fits. And push, see if it fits. So I'm pushing pretty firmly and I'm pretty happy with that. All right. I can see that the bead is kind of bulging out where the bead is. Right, because you want your netting to kind of open up at this stage, right? Right, right. It's going to open up and you can see the nets very clearly. Isn't it interesting? That's what we're looking for. It looks more like a flower than this one. Yeah, yeah. You know? Just by reversing the color of the bead. Yeah, that's all I did. Mm -hmm. Reverse that one color, okay? Okay, so here we go. This is the fun and might be frustrating part for everyone. I don't do this on the bead. I do it in my fingers and I don't worry about putting any kind of a, um, Oh, you know what else I want? Hold that thought. I want one other color of bead. Hold on. Oh, Hold so on. we can see the beads that you put in. Yep. I've got it right here in my seed bead kit. Got a little, Great. little fun bead here. It will do just fine for this job. Very visible. And so I ended up doing, I did one row of all white here. And so the all white and the all blue will define our two edges, our two selvages. And I'm going to pick up a bead. And this is kind of the fun, kind of mysterious part of all this. This is the last bead of this Pico. And I'm going to pick it up. And I'm going to stitch from one side to the other. Oh, hold on, Kate. Let me go back. Okay. One step back. So sorry. We need an uneven number of picos. So there's. Yes, I was going to say. Yeah. One more pico on this upper side than this lower side. The lower side is the side with the stopper bead on it. Okay. So I think I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen. And I have over here, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. So we're gonna have an odd number because we're gonna create the last Pico at the very beginning, mm -hmm. okay? So two different numbers. And this is gonna vary again by this diameter of your bead. And so I'd rather tell you how to do it 
yourself then have to always give you a measurement and have your bead be at four millimeters off and now it's wrong. So just go ahead and count when you think you're getting close and see that you're at that odd number. So one thread is my working thread is coming out of the top edge. I have my um, uh, stopper bead thread where I began coming out of that bottom edge. So you're at the odd number on the top and the even number one less on the bottom, sort of. I mean, the the one the the even number is on the row with your stopper bead. The odd number is the row without the stopper bead. I may have misspoken. What I want you to have is have one number up here and a one lower down below. So it doesn't matter if it's an odd or even number. Nope. It just needs to be one pico fewer. Correct. So if the top was 14, the lower would be 13. Correct. Gotcha. Okay. So now I'm going to pick up a bead, one bead at a time, and I'm going to stitch across the beadwork to that number three bead, that middle bead in that net right across the beadwork. I'm going to pull this through. And so yeah. that's actually your last pico there, correct, yeah. Emily? Mm -hmm. Oh, and I got the wrong bead. Yikes. So I just did a very risky move there and it paid off. Yeah, you did. Not always. <laughs> Better to unneedle your thread or push your needle out eye first. I really need this guy right here. Yeah, you need that one. There we go. Okay. Pull it through. Pick up another bead. Now I'm going to go across over to here and I'm going to find that same bead that I just went through, but in this group. Okay. And that's that guy right there. So it's so fun. This is a little bit like mending. We're going to go from side to side and we're looking for the middle bead of each net, right? So that would right, be the, the one that's would, sticking out. Yep, that'd be the one that was sticking out. And it'd be the one that you would um, be looking for to connect if you were stitching a new net. Because you're not adding any other beads because the beads on either selvage row, those beads are already in place. You don't want right. to add anything or else you're going to be adding mm -hmm. another row. Right. You're kind of, you're kind of finishing off each side. Right. If that makes any sense. I think. I right. Think so these, these two sides are meeting in this little net. Um, the, this is like the middle, as you say, this is the bead that you're um, adding that kind of brings those two sides together. Yep. I'm not stating it very well, but you're working from both ends. It's almost like a puzzle piece. It's kind mm -hmm. of, you're filling in the gaps on both sides. Right, right. Remember this one's gonna be a weird one because this, there's that Pico that was colored one that was the color of a Pico. Right, so you just ignore that. Yep. Put that through. You're almost home. I am, super close. But I wanna, I will pause here for a moment and let you look at the stitching. on my finger here. So the thread simply goes back and forth, back and forth. And I, as I draw this together, you're gonna love it. It's so pretty when it all kind of comes together. Yep, and there it is. You can see there's that center bead pulling everything together. Now, the last thing that Emily has to do is she needs to complete her Pico. Right. So I'm going to bring my one more bead. I'm going to come over. I'm going to go through the second bead that I started with and the stop bead at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that those are the first two beads that I put on this piece of, of work. And see how that bead, it centers it. That Pico is now centered. And I need to add, I need three more beads here. Three. Five mm -hmm. beads to go. And here's another thing. Look at these guys. We talk about evenness of beads, right? Those beads are pretty uneven in size. Yeah. Black beads are tending to be bigger 
bigger this way than a white bead. If I put a white bead on there at the same time, there's a pretty big difference, right? Mm -hmm. If I do a checkerboard style pattern, I have to make sure I do it with even checkerboards. Otherwise my beadwork is going to be. It's going to be ripply. Rip yeah. Yeah. All right. And so now for the Pico, we're oh, going to skip that right. one bead. Skip that guy back through. And I'm going to go back through my first part of my netting. So mm -hmm. I'm going to pick up any beads. I can go back and forth through any of these beads. I'm going to work my way up to the top of my beadwork, to that other netted edge, just zigzagging along. And, and Emily, uh, the needle size that you're, you're using, that's a 12 that you're using, right? It is. Mm -hmm. That's you know, what we've included in the kit. You might be able to get away with a 10 from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, but 12 makes it pretty easy. I'm going to do a couple right. of knots. So I stitched under a thread in between the bead and I just t t tied a little knot and I'm going to continue on and I'll probably tie about two knots here. Pull it up nice and firm. I want all that seam, that gap that I have from the, where I've, I've uh, finished my work and seamed it together. I want that gap to pull up nice and tight. And so she's there. going under that thread, pulling it through the loop and tightening it down. So it's nice and even. Yeah. <laughs> Have your all at your hand so that if you get a loop like I just did, you can get your all in there. Oh, it's a knot sigh. That's a sigh of, oh, I got a mm -hmm. knot. You got a knot. I got a knot. Well, it, it, it happens, happens to the best of us. It happens to everybody any old time. I got a little and cocky. The all, there we go. That's I got a little right. cocky. There you go. A little bit too snugly at first. Hopefully that's going to zip in there. And it's not. All right. I'm not going to worry about that loop thread for the moment. All right. I'm going to just motor on here. I'm going to bring my needle up and out of my Pico bead. And through all my... I don't know, Kate, this may be too low a camera angle. Move hands, I keep bumping the camera. Oh, no, I can, I can, well, now, now I'm missing, now you're out of frame. There you go. I'm going to come out one of the edge, one of those final Pico beads and leave my thread there for the moment. Okay. So what I want to do is grab a different needle and I'm going to go back down here to the beginning. Now, I usually leave a six to eight inch tail on my work next to my stopper bead. And I do this because I want to have enough thread to weave that thread in and secure it. Um, in this case, I'm also going to be weaving it through the um, edges of the Pico beads to cinch the bead around the wood bead, bead work around the wood bead. So I want to make sure I leave enough. Mm -hmm. So I have to turn around, turn my needle and thread around. So I went through the Pico, back down. You're a little out of frame again, I'm sorry. There you go. Great. And I'm going to continue to just go in here and do the same thing I just did. I'm going to weave through some beads. I'm going to tie a knot or two. Then I'm going to pop out on a Pico. And I'm going to do it on the same edge that I'm on here. So one of the things I tend to do when I tie knots is I like to change direction. So go from one, if I'm going to the left, I want to go to the right. And that way I get the thread is really kind of holding things together and keeping things nice and firm. So you're just going to go back up through a Pico on that same Edge. Uh, that same edge. Yeah. Yep. And see how Emily is just taking it on the diagonal all the way through on the diagonal. Now she's going to pop up through the end of that Pico. And now we're going to start to cinch it. Is that right, Em? That's correct. Kate, you're yeah. way ahead of me. Uh, I'm like that, that narrator on the nature show. 
after the guy's been in the blind for two months. Right. Right. Wait so and... now we're going to add that bead and see how the bead, the fit here, folks, is really the key. So see how the bead, it doesn't fall out of the netting. That's how you know, at least that's how I do it. If it doesn't like the bulge. Yeah, because that's really what spreads that netting apart. So it looks like a netted piece. Yep. And I do find this is an easier time to have my bead in place. It gives mm -hmm. me a little bit more stability, something to hang on to. So right. I'm going to bring my needle and thread using all of my end Pico beads. There is a nice available hole for me to just string my needle through. And these will kind of flip flop back and forth. It, you know, doesn't make any difference. They are all fine. Now, this is the point. If your fringe, Pico fringe, was not reaching where you needed it to reach. Correct. You would add your bead in between. That's correct. I can do it on the other one, too, and I'll grab that one in just a second. So this is a nice way to cinch this all down and oh janice i'm going to use on one of these i'm going to use your little new little drop beads too that you sent me kate sent me mm -hmm. to yeah our new drops which are launching next week i think oh i can't wait or in two weeks i think i think i could They're actually net, i think i could actually net with them as i think i could actually stitch with them as well mm -hmm. yeah Maybe i'm excited you. i'm going to use them in kumahimo are you really i am good girl Go ahead and can you maybe center that beat? You're a little low. There you go. Great. So see, everybody, Emily's just going through each leg of the fringe. And this is where also you need to kind of pay attention that you're grabbing, that you're not missing one of the legs of the Pico fringe, which I have done. And yeah, then you have one random leg. Tough. The black bead was maybe kind of a tough call for this. It's a little hard on my eyes, but. We're, we're doing it. We're doing it. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to cinch this together. Um, not maybe not as tight, as tight as I could possibly get, but pretty close. And I'm going to go around one more time with my needle and thread. And I'll go to the other side. Okay. I guess the UPS man came and went because now the dogs are quiet. Oh, excellent. <laughs> My printer is like randomly printing. How oh, fun. <laughs> I'm not, I think it's because it finally, the, uh, it finally picked up the, uh, the airdrop there. I was all, what's that going on? But I think it's just. Oh, what's happening over I here? Okay. I miss one. I missed one. Look at that guys. Yeah. See, that's, that's what happens. Yeah. I, I, that was on the second go around, so it was easy okay. to spot. But um, yeah, you know, I do that cool though. Out. That's one of my uh, foibles with this. You know, um, next time when we do this in 15s, maybe we'll make the end of that pico bead be a different color. Yeah, and that will help everybody seeing what we're doing here. And uh, I think I also get excited, and I go, I get, I try to go through too many beads at once, Kate. You know, yeah well that's you know it's, it's an a, easy thing to do a rush, rush to the finish <laughs> so you're going so you've gone through that round i like to go through twice twice mm -hmm. i don't really need to feel the need to do three i mean that seems and then are you passing are you gonna weave your needle back through the beadwork or are you mm. gonna take it down through the bead i'm gonna weave it back through that pico okay right here and you're gonna use the thread on the other side to cinch up the other side correct yes because that thread is looking a little short well it would be yes for that but it's yeah. perfect for this yes to close it off yeah so leaving a tail <laughs> at the beginning um the longer the happier i do think there's a point where it's you know, overkill, but um, generally we have having a nice long eight to 10 inch, six to eight to 10 inch long thread at the tail is desirable. 
great. Ugh, sorry, I keep bumping the camera. So sorry. It's just right into the thread hand path. A couple of knots. And we will call it good. I feel like I was doing it. There we go. Tie that guy off. And I'm going to grab my thread burner, which has a fresh battery in it. Amen. Yes. Fresh battery. Good job. Right? That's like a brand, a whole brand new day when you've got yeah. a fresh battery in your yeah. thread burner. Yep. Get rid of that. And I left my other thread needle threaded in. So I'm really good to go on this other side. And taking care to get every leg all tape, I will grab each one. Excellent. And see how um, they're just that little, like we said, the whole of that top bead, it's on the horizon, not on the vertical. So it goes from the right to the left, and you just shoot your needle all the way through. It's now, again, if this is something that doesn't quite fit, you can add at any point um, an extra um, bead at the end. Extra bead in between. Bead. Yeah. So I would I would look at this if it's it feels like it's not going to fit. I would say so. The, let's say I have fifteen picos or sixteen. Mm -hmm. I I would say let's do one every third and sort of see how it looks. Right, to uh, spread out the extra yeah. length throughout the piece so it's not all bunched up together. So that cinches up pretty nice and even. That's a happy day. Right around. Second round, second pass is easier because all the beads are kind of laying right in the right directions. It's funny, these, these uh, seed bead in a kit beads that we chose to work with. You know, I did this just so that we would have some beads to kind of practice with. Mm -hmm. And coming back to them, I sort of like mm -hmm. them blue and white and the black. And, you know, you can throw in another color if you want. Um, that little red, uh, red. I think this is a really attractive bead. I like the three different colorways and stuff in it. It makes yeah. it, it has, it makes it have like a vintage feel to it honestly oh you know you remind me of vintage things because i have to i have to show you something on the internet okay just remind me okay. it's not bead related though so okay well that's all right it's a vintagey thing and you'll love it I, I just you know it. you know how i like it so see how emily's gone through twice now she's just weaving her thread back down through tying her couple of knots and then she's just going to change direction bury that thread and that's all she wrote but if yep. you had to add thread to this, this is the same way that you would weave it on and then weave it off. I yeah. add, I add my new thread first, and then have the needle come out of the bead hole where it needs to be, and then I weave my old thread back so I don't lose my place. So here's a here's a little tip for you. That needle mm -hmm. does not want to go through that bead. Mm -mm, I saw that. Be that there's actually a knot in there. So I'm actually just going to change directions. Yeah. So don't force it. So don't you don't force break it. it. I mean, you can give it a good firm, you know, I mean this pull, but if it's really not coming through, I would not necessarily reach for my pliers in this case. Mm -mm, because you don't want to, um, you don't want to bust a bead in this, well, like you last. The bead is to force it to be bigger in the middle. Than exactly. The bead. That's the easiest way to break the bead. Sometimes it's useful to know that and to have that right. in, your, in your powers. All right. And there, Almost there it is. So I like to do one last little um, thing here. I like to kind of roll it around between my hands. 
gives it just a little kind of evening out. Right, settles so it. Nice. I do like this little three colors too, Kate. Yeah, it's cute. It's yeah. cute. And it really does show the juxtaposition of the white and blue. And then it shows also how a single color looks. Yeah. It's great. Right. And the, when it all gets evened up, that seam looks incredibly like perfect. It's just mm -hmm. exactly symmetrical and right in there. Really yeah. nice. Great job, Em. Thanks. So do you want to see me add a bead in here? Well, we are running a we little bit problem. over. Okay. Um, so why don't maybe if you count, like you said with that one, maybe you'd go every third leg. I think so. I don't think I need a bead in between every single one. No. And this is kind of, you could just show how you decide that. And then we can, I think, uh, move on from there. So I'm going to count how many legs I've got. I'm going to hold on to the one that has the thread in it. So that's one, mm -hmm. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15. That's a nice number. Mm -hmm. um, I think I would do every fifth one. So mm -hmm. I would be adding about three beads to mm -hmm. the circle. Mm -hmm. um, and I would go around once and stop and take a look at it, kind of cinch it down and then look at the other side too. Um, but I think that would gain me enough. I just needed a little bit more. Right. To close it up. Yep. Nice. Close though. Thanks, Kate. No, it looks good. Looks good. So M, beautifully done. Another epic week this week under our belts. Yes. Let me, I'm going to take this out and put us up. So I don't know if you're ready, but I'm going to put us up here. I'm ready as I'll ever be. All right there. Whoops. That's just me. Hang on. <laughs> there we go. Great job. So I have a couple from my, um, Oh, look at that beautiful red one. I love it. My collection of, yeah. I'm going to actually solo me here real quick. So you all can see these. I did oh. what I really love doing these and you can see I've got the, the um there we go you can see that yeah. i've added the extra bead in mm -hmm. there you can see that yep um i like doing these a tone on tone so i did kind of this terracotta color with the um with the copper and then this kind of silvery gray color with that duracoat antique silver so it's kind of fun and then i've got a blue one here that i have to finish but doing kind of a a regular color and then a, a a metallic is also kind of a fun way to do the designing of this so um that's just my little one that i threw out there here's a little burgundy red one with oh here let me let me put you up close oh yeah that same idea really pretty and you know the last time we did these i did tons of black and white ones mm -hmm. the black and white ones are really pretty they're really strong and dynamic looking yeah you know um and i liked the black and white together actually i think mm -hmm. it's very kind of a strong palette yeah and i like that about, shape too how do you feel about black and white kate oh you know i like <laughs> did <laughs> no, you notice something. here we get on the live to prep and i look at emily and i say <laughs> nice striped shirt <laughs> i can't believe it nobody emily. said anything the whole time the whole time. I did want to also show these to you all. These make a really great uh, earring as well. And can you see how I use, this is the uh, Rondell. I think it's the, this might have been the eight millimeter. I don't know, but you could use a round bead or whatever. And that's what plugs up the hole in the bottom. They're very light to wear. I used it on the fancy pants chain. So it was fun. Sorry, they're moving around. I'm trying to stop it there. But yeah. they look great um, as an also, earring. I would also put some beads in the hole. Um, I think they probably are on the head pin. Yeah. yeah. On the inside. Mm -hmm. Great. So, Emily, you and I are going to be chatting. There's a couple of things that are coming up. You and I are going to be chatting about the new loom soon. I'm going to pull my calendar out, make sure I'm on the right day. New loom. Oh, yes. We're going to talk about that. That's yep. coming up. I also have, folks, I decided that I was going to do an extra live for you this week. 
because I didn't do one last Friday because we were off for the holiday. And I'm going to use, check your newsletters in the morning, okay? Because I'm going to do a special little Kate move. It's going to be at the same time, 10.30 a.m. Pacific, um, and I'll make the broadcast for it so you all can find it. Um, but it's just going to be a short little skill builder for all of you all. I'm going to use the, the mix I put together for the holidays, and I'm going to show you how to do a, um, a button and loop. And I'm going to finish my necklace that's an homage to my uh, great-grandma Lily. So you all will see that. And so what date are we uh, coming together? Um, In one week. Yeah, one week. One week from today. From today. Friday the night. We're gonna we're gonna talk about looms. Yep. And tomorrow it'll be December third. It'll be at ten thirty a.m. Pacific. So, woo, Emily, what a triumph! Let I, me just go back through and I'm tell. So excited to see everybody's beads that they make. Yeah, they're and, really fun because the the beads are so 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 pretty. And it's a fun, once you complete one and you kind of stumble through it, that's what I did. Uh, you can kind of see your mistakes, kind of get the hang of it, and then you'll be making them um, bead after bead. I did want to remind everyone that you can find all of the information on the project that we did today and the products. Emily's curated three different colorways. You can find them right on our website. Right now, they're on the homepage. Um, later, if you're not watching this live, later down the road when they're not on the homepage of our website at beadshop.com, you can just put in the search box netted bead and they'll show up. Um, you can also go to projects, you'll find them there listed. So pretty easy to find. Also, folks, don't forget to sign up for that newsletter for the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products. And do not forget to follow us on all of our social. You can find us on Instagram at beadshop.com. You can also join Emily's Insta at Emily B. Miller Jewelry. Um, she's going to be having an Instagram sale tomorrow. So if you've always wanted to own a piece of Emily's jewels, uh, you can find her selling online tomorrow. You can also join us at the bead table on Facebook with um, our wonderful bead shop community there. And of course, hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. We're so close to 100,000 followers. And that's all I want for the holidays this year is for you to follow us on YouTube. So that is it. A big thanks to um, to uh, Janice for doing all of that great linking over on YouTube. A big thank you to Gita uh, doing all of that great linking over on Facebook. Um, a big thank you to you, M. Everyone's saying how fabulous uh, it was. It looked uh, like a really great, fun project to do. Look at all those. How beautiful they are. Maybe fun really on a great. Pack, a little gift bag or package. I mean, come on. Yeah, it's great. Maybe extra. And um, I'll, <coughs> pardon me, I'll hear what Emily has to tell me about vintage and we'll reveal it uh, next week. I don't know. People are asking. So <laughs> we'll share that next week, next Friday on the, on the Kate and Emily show. Thanks so much, everybody, for a really fun, fun uh project. Thanks for sticking with us on this extra special long version of our free tip Friday. Emily and I'll see you next week. I will see you tomorrow right here for my very special Saturday version of Bead Shop Live. Um, stay creative, stay healthy, stay well, and I'll see you all soon. Thanks again, Em. Bye, Kate. Bye, guys. Bye.